In the second part of my coverage of the cost of capital, I'll discuss some quirks of the WACC and how we actually calculate the intrinsic value of a firm using the WACC. I'll start by going through some basic factors to consider when using the cost of capital. Then I'll talk about how some analysts and investors adjust the weighted average cost of capital in specific situations. This, as you saw in the previous video, is our weighted average cost of capital formula. Our D is the amount of debt that the firm has borrowed, and we typically calculate that as the total liabilities on the firm's balance sheet. Our R sub D is our cost of debt. That's usually going to be the yield to maturity on the firm's most recently issued bond. Our TC, or T sub C, is our marginal tax rate for the firm. That's just the tax rate in the firm's top tax bracket. E is going to be our market value of the firm's equity, and that's usually going to be calculated as the market cap of the firm. And then finally, R sub E is our cost of equity, and that's just the expected return on the stock using the cap M or the dividend growth model. But usually we prefer to use the cap M if we have the components. There are a lot of factors that can affect the firm's WACC. For example, if interest rates increase, the cost of debt will increase. Also, if the tax rate increases, the beneficial tax deduction will obviously correspondingly increase. The cost of capital is also determined by the amount of debt and equity a firm issues. For example, if interest rates fall and it becomes much cheaper to borrow money, firms will often borrow more. This will drive down their WACC since they're using more of the cheaper debt than the more expensive equity to raise capital. Some firms issue preferred stock to raise capital. If that's the case, we need to include the weight and cost of preferred stock in our WACC equation. The way we do this is by including P in the denominator for all of our weights, and P is the total value of the preferred stock issued by the firm. We calculate the weight of the preferred stock by dividing the total value of preferred stock by the total amount of capital raised, debt plus equity plus preferred stock. The cost of preferred stock is the annual return on that preferred stock. If you remember our discussion from a couple of lectures ago, you might remember that the return on preferred stock is simply the dividend on the preferred stock divided by the price. For example, if we know that our preferred stock has an annual dividend of $1 and its current share price is $16, the return on that preferred stock is just going to be calculated using the perpetuity formulas. So 1 divided by 16 after we've rearranged the perpetuity formula, and that'll give us a 6.25% return. Now, let's switch gears and discuss how we can estimate the discount rate for capital budgeting projects. I'll discuss two techniques. The subjective approach to estimating a discount rate involves knowing a firm's WACC and adjusting it upward or downward to get a hurdle rate and a corresponding discount rate for a firm's capital budgeting projects. The pure play approach involves us using the firm's data and the beta of firms that are purely in the industry that our firm is considering investing in via its capital budgeting project. Let's talk about the subjective approach to capital budgeting first. A firm's WACC represents the average cost of capital of the firm, and a firm is, as it's been said, a quote-unquote, nexus of contracts, or a collection of capital budgeting projects. This means that the average capital budgeting project of the firm has a discount rate equal to the firm's WACC. For riskier capital budgeting projects, we would want to discount the cash flows with a higher rate than the WACC to account for the increased riskiness of the project's cash flows. The reason I mention this is because if we want to estimate a discount rate for a capital budgeting project attempted by the firm, we could just take our WACC and adjust it upward or downward. Let's see this in action. Here's an example of why we would want to adjust our discount rate upward or downward for projects with different risk levels. In this example, we have two projects we could invest in. One is a new product line, which is very risky but could potentially offer us a 22% internal rate of return. The other project is a new production facility to help us increase our production of an existing product line. If we have to ration our capital and only invest in one of these projects, and our WACC, which we use as our discount rate, is 18%, we're obviously going to invest in the new product line because the internal rate of return is greater than the discount rate, which we often use as our hurdle rate when we use the IRR method. 
However, this might not be appropriate since starting a new product line can be very risky and it should typically require a large amount of R&D before it ever turns a profit. To account for this additional risk of this capital budgeting project, we might want to increase our WACC and create a risk adjusted discount rate that approximates the riskiness of this new product line. Let's say that we've determined that we need at least a 25% return on projects that are as risky as this new product line. In that case, we would want to reject that new product line as a capital budgeting project. Conversely, if the new production facility is extremely low risk because we already know that the demand for that product that would be produced in that new production facility is there, we might want to adjust our WACC downward to reflect this. If we adjust our WACC down to, an, to a risk adjusted discount rate of 8%, we would absolutely want to accept the risk of the new production facility. The takeaway from this example is that the WACC gives you an indicator of the average risk of the firm's capital budgeting projects. If you're deciding what the discount rate, aka the hurdle rate in this example, of a project should be, the WACC can be used as a starting point for you. The primary idea behind the subjective approach to capital budgeting is that we get our WACC and then we identify the discount rate or hurdle rate by adding or subtracting a certain amount from that WACC. If the project that we're looking at is riskier, then we want to increase the WACC to get a higher discount rate, aka hurdle rate. If the project is lower or low risk, we would want to adjust the WACC downward by a certain amount, depending on the riskiness of projects that we're considering. And so obviously our, our hurdle rate is going to be lower for those projects. Now, the pure play approach to capital budgeting involves identifying one or more companies that focus on the project that we're considering investing in and then using their data to estimate a discount rate or hurdle rate. If we're considering starting an online movie rental business, for example, we would want to use a comparable firm like Netflix in our analysis. So that's step one in the pure play approach. Next, we take our comparable company's beta. If we've identified multiple companies in the industry in which we're considering making a capital budgeting investment, we would want to take the weighted average beta of those firms. Once we have the beta, we use that beta as if it was our own firm's beta and calculate our cost of equity based on that, that comparable average beta. Then we include this cost of equity using the CAPM formula in our WACC calculation. The end result is that we're estimating our firm's WACC based on the assumption that our firm's weight of debt and equity would remain the same and our firm's systematic risk is equal to that of firms in the industry that our firm is invested in or investing in. The WACC that we calculate will be our discount rate for that particular project. Now, as you've probably noticed, there are some issues with the pure play approach. First, it can be difficult to find publicly traded companies with a beta that we can use in our discount rate estimation. We might not have any publicly traded competitors operating in that industry, or it may be the case that those competitors are too big or too small to be comparable to our firm. Second, most firms that are publicly traded are not going to be solely in the industry that we're investing in. There are going to be a lot of conglomerates that have capital budgeting projects in many industries, and we definitely don't want to use the beta of any conglomerates because those firms are not pure plays. In fact, there are actually very few cases where the pure play approach is possible or even used. The subjective approach is arguably the more common of the two approaches because it's more flexible and you don't need the same amount of information to estimate a discount rate for a given project. Now let's summarize what we just talked about. The cost of capital or discount rate represents the cost that the firm must pay its creditors or shareholders in order to raise capital. We usually estimate that rate by calculating the weighted average cost of capital. Next. When preferred stock is issued by a firm, we oftentimes want to make sure to include it in our estimation of the WAC, and I gave you a formula for that. So we just include the preferred stock's return and the total value of the preferred stock. 
Finally, when a firm is choosing between capital budgeting projects, the WACC can be used to estimate the discount rate for those projects. The two approaches that we typically use are the subjective or the pure play approach. The subjective approach simply takes the firm's WACC as a starting point and then adjusting the WACC upward or downward based on whether or not the manager believes the capital budgeting project in question is riskier or less risky than the firm's average capital budgeting project. The pure play approach simply finds comparable firms to our target firm in the industry that we're considering making a capital budgeting investment and uses those comparable firms' betas to calculate the cost of equity, re-estimate the weighted average cost of capital, and uses that re-estimated weighted average cost of capital as the discount rate for that capital budgeting project. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this coverage of the cost of capital. If you do have any questions, please feel free to email me, call me, or stop by my office hours. And thank you very much.